In today's video, we're talking about scientific notation. You've seen it in math class, but we typically use it to write very large and very small numbers. If you look, 1 times 10 to the n actually means 1 times 10 n times. n is not necessarily the number of zeros. So in, if you look at these examples on the screen, 1.0 times 10 to the 1, 10 to the 1 is 10, so 1 times 10 is 10, but that's 10.0 and here, so not the number of zeros. And then here, we have 1.0 times 10 squared. 10 squared is 100, so 100.0. In the third one, 1 1.0 times 10 to the third, 10 times 10 is 100 times 10 is 1,000, so that's 1,000.0. And then if we change that number at the beginning, and it can be really any number, 1.65 times 10 to the seventh, what we've done is we've moved that decimal to the right six. Uh, sorry, seven places. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that gives us uh, 16,500,000 point zero. All right, so let's talk about standard units. We want to be sure that we're using the same units as other scientists use, and there's a standard system called the System International Day Units. Uh, I don't speak French clearly, but it's used internationally by all scientists. And what it does is it allows us to make sure that we're consistent with other countries around the world. And it's in English, we call it the International System of Units. For length, we have the meter, which is abbreviated with a lowercase m. Case is very important with abbreviations, so watch those. Mass is uh, kilograms, which is abbreviated with a lowercase kg. Time is seconds, its abbreviation is S, not SEC. Temperature is done in Kelvin, and we'll get into that a little bit more later. Uh, it's abbreviated with a capital K. You're probably more familiar with Celsius, and Celsius and Kelvin are similar in scale, but we'll talk about why we use Kelvin when we get further into the course. Volume is liter, capital L, and energy is joule with a capital J. If you look at the SI prefixes, these are ones that you will need to know. So go ahead and, and write these down. You might want to make yourself some flashcards because I will expect you to know these. Uh, in a couple of days, they would be likely to pop up on, say, a quiz, and definitely will be a problem if you don't know them for the test. So I would start working on those right away. So let's start with our base unit. There's no symbol for that, so that would be your standard unit like liters or meters. And the scientific notation is 1 times 10 to the 0. Hopefully you remember that 10 to the 0 is 1, so there's no scientific notation that goes uh, along with that. It's just multiplied by 1. The next unit is kilo, small k. That's why it's important to use the correct case. And the scientific notation that is associated that with that is 1 times 10 to the third. And again, make sure that you are working on memorizing these from now on, because I will expect you to know the name, the symbol, and the scientific notation correctly. The next one that you'll need to know is mega. When you think of mega, think of some things like mega stores, uh, things like that. Mega typically means really big. So the capital M symbol for mega means 1 times 10 to the 6. The next one is giga. If you think about computers or computer memory, maybe you've heard of gig. That's short for giga. And obviously a gig of data is a large amount of data. The symbol is a capital G and the scientific notation for that is 1 times 10 to the 9th. So that's a pretty large number. The next ones that I want you to look at are the ones that are smaller than that base unit. They're going to have negative exponents. So deci, you're probably familiar with that. Decimal, um, things like that. That has a symbol of a lowercase d, and its scientific notation is 1 times 10 to the negative 1. So because it has that lower, uh, the negative exponent, you would move the, the decimal to the left. So that's the same as 0.1. Centi, you've heard of that, centipede, uh, century, centimeter, those are things that involve hundred or hundredths. It has a lowercase c for a symbol. Its scientific notation is 1 times 10 to the negative 2. And then milli, uh, you've heard of millipedes, things like that. M is a lowercase, m is the symbol. And then the scientific notation is 1 times 10 to the negative third. 
The next one after that is micro. When you think about something being micro, like a microscope, we used to look at really small things. So micro means something that's pretty small. And that is a Greek letter, that little U with the little funny uh, tail on it. And what you want to do if you have to write it is you want to write kind of a U with a little tail. Okay, uh, it doesn't matter which side to me you put it on. I usually just make like a little, you just don't want it to look like an M because that would confuse me. I want to see micro and know that it's micro. The scientific notation for that is 1 times 10 to the negative 6. And then the next one you'll need to know is nano. And you may have heard of nanoparticles or uh, nanobots, sometimes you hear about things like that. Nano is obviously really small, and that symbol for that is a lowercase n. Scientific notation is 1 times 10 to the negative ninth. And then the last one I'll ask you to memorize is pico, and even smaller than nano, lowercase p for the symbol, and then the scientific notation is 1 times 10 to the negative 12. Don't forget to work on memorizing those because I'll expect you to know those. Now, go ahead and take a look at this. You can pause the video. See if you can figure out how long the black bar is. Go ahead and just jot down your answer somewhere in your notes. Now, look at the black bar. A lot of people will say that it is 3.6, sometimes they'll say 3.6 centimeters. I hope you put a unit with your number. It would be centimeters. You can see on the uh, little ruler there, it's got the unit specified, so you want to use centimeters. But if you'll notice, the, the bar is not lined up with the edge of the ruler, and that is something that we do often because sometimes the rulers are not flat on the end, the corners get rubbed off and that sort of thing. And so we will use uh, the one centimeter mark to start the measurement. And then if you count from one centimeter, that would be that would be one centimeter at number two, two centimeters at number three, and then it would be 2.6. But then you want to go ahead and estimate one more digit. We're not really certain of that digit, so different people might have different things. Some people might say that's 2.65 centimeters or 2.66 centimeters, 2.64 centimeters. Any of those would be right, and we understand that that last digit is uncertain, and we'll talk about that just in a minute. So for measurements, the rules are you always use the digits you know with certainty. So we know that there are tick marks here for one centimeter and two. So the first digit for the two we know. And then the tenths are marked, so we know the, the two and the six. It's 2.6 something because we're going to estimate that one additional digit. So 2.63 centimeters, 2.64 centimeters, any of those last digits would be acceptable. Now if you put 2.7 zero centimeters, that would probably be a little off, so you want to be careful when you're looking at things, but there is just some inherent uncertainty in measurements. And if you look at that, th what happens is we just know that using that estimated digit introduces some uncertainty into that process. So we always assume that that last digit has some uncertainty in it. So that's just something to be aware of as you're making measurements, and we'll be doing some practice in class with that. Here's the last thing that you need to know about measurements. You may not have seen this before. If you've ever heard the word meniscus, you probably heard it in relationship to a knee uh, as per, an athletes had a torn meniscus or had to have surgery on their knee to repair their meniscus. When we talk about a meniscus in chemistry, it's a curved surface when we have a cylindrical container. So when you see something like a graduated cylinder, um, it has that when you put a liquid in it, it has this little curve on it. And in order to make sure that we read consistently, we always want to read the volume at the bottom of the meniscus. And if you look at this, you can see where our scale goes from 30 up to 40. Remember, we're going to read from the bottom up on a graduated cylinder. And so we're going to read at the bottom of the meniscus so that we're consistent. So this would be, we know 30, that's the the tens place because that's certain. 31, 32, 33, 34, that's 35. We know that 5 is certain. 
and then I would estimate that right on the line. So I would estimate at that at 35.0. Somebody else might estimate that one at 34.9, 35.1 uh, milliliters, and any of those would be correct. And the reason that we have to be really careful doing this is what can happen is we have to make sure that we read this at eye level. So you'll either want to pick up the graduated cylinder and hold it at eye level, or you want to uh, get down a little bit so that you can see the cylinder when you're at your desk working. Because otherwise what will happen, if you've ever made brownies or something like that and you've poured the oil or you've gotten water in a measuring cup, and you've done poured that while the measuring cup was on the counter, but then when you lift it up, you realize you don't have the correct amount. That's called parallax error. And what happens is if you don't read that instrument at eye level, it creates the illusion that it's where you think it is, but when you actually look at eye level, it's not correct. And you may notice if you're riding with your mom or your dad or a friend who's driving, you think, gosh, they're really driving slowly. Like driving like an old lady. But what's happening is you're seeing the speedometer from the passenger seat, and so that's parallax error. So when you're just thinking about what happens, you want to make sure you hold that up and uh, the graduated cylinder and hold that up and read that at eye level or any anything like a burette where it's just a cylindrical measurement that has that meniscus in it. Thanks, and I'll see you in class.